Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another video with us here at LMD and STEM Academy. In this video, we will be working through several past paper questions based on the topic of empirical and molecular formula. So let's begin. This question in particular is from the Cape Chemistry Unit 1 Paper 2 from June 2006. So this is question one, and it reads, in an experiment to determine the empirical and molecular formulae of a hydrocarbon, A, the hydrocarbon is completely burned in excess oxygen and the products collected. A gave 3.52 grams of carbon dioxide and 1.62 grams of water on complete combustion. Here we have the relative molecular mass of carbon dioxide, which is 44, and we also have the relative molecular mass of water, which is 18. So before we even get into the questions here, let's just write out an equation for what's happening here, right, from a combustion standpoint. So let's write our equation to just orient ourselves. So we're going to write that we have a hydrocarbon A. So it's just going to be composed of carbon and hydrogen. We don't yet know how many carbon atoms are in it, and we don't know how many hydrogen atoms are in it, so we just denote those as X and Y respectively. We know that that's been combusted, so it's been reacted with oxygen, oxygen gas. And then upon combustion, complete combustion, we will obtain carbon dioxide, gas, and steam, right? So that's the general description here of what's going on in this combustion of this hydrocarbon A. Okay, so let's get into the questions now. In part A, we are asked to calculate the mass of I, carbon, that's present in the 3.52 grams of carbon dioxide that gets formed. Okay, so if we look at a molecule of carbon dioxide, right? So if we look at a molecule of carbon dioxide, right? We see that there is one carbon atom that's present in it, right? And so if we look at the complete um, relative molecular mass of carbon dioxide, we know that that's 44 grams, right? 44 gram per mole, right? And so in that, 44 gram per mole, we know that 12 grams of that, right, would be carbon. And so in any carbon dioxide molecule, we will always have this ratio of carbon atoms to the total atoms that are in that molecule, right? So now, because we only have 3.52 grams of carbon dioxide, we have to multiply that by this fraction there of carbon by 3.52 grams. And so when we do that, these units go away and we are left with a mass of 0 0.96 grams of carbon. Okay, so again, in one molecule of carbon dioxide, there's only one carbon atom, and that has a that one carbon atom has a mass of 12 gram per mole. And because we're looking at the amount of carbon that's present in carbon dioxide, we have to divide that by the molar mass or the molecular mass of carbon dioxide. So that's this first part here. And the multiplicative part is because we only have 3.53 grams of carbon dioxide, we're going to multiply this fractional value of carbon by that mass, right? And that would give us the mass of carbon that's then present in that, in that specific mass of carbon dioxide, okay? Okay, so we're going to do a similar approach for hydrogen, which is part two here. And so let's just write down one molecule of, of water, right? And what that looks like. So what we can see here is that in one molecule of water, we have two hydrogen atoms. Do you see? We have two hydrogen atoms in one molecule of water. So let me just write it. There are two H atoms, right, in one molecule of water. So 
What that means is that when we look at the water molecule as a whole and we look at the masses, of the 18 gram per mole, that is the molecular mass, two gram per mole will be coming from the hydrogens, the two hydrogens, okay? So we're going to say two out of the 18 gram per mole is what represents the hydrogen in water. And because they told us that we only obtain 1.62 grams, we're going to say, okay, if this is what we have in one molecule, but you're telling us that we only have 1.62 grams of water molecule, then that means that when we do this division through and we multiply through by that mass, we're going to end up getting a mass of hydrogen of 0 0.18 grams. Okay, so that's the mass of hydrogen that we have in the water, right? In this specific amount of water. So the important thing to note here, again, is the law of conservation of mass. So if it is that we just found that we have 0 0.96 grams of carbon in this carbon dioxide, this all of this mass must have came from here, over here. And so the same thing for hydrogen. If, if it is that we have 0 0.18 gram of hydrogen in this water here, right, which was 1.62 grams, then all of this must have came from this compound A over here, okay? And so we have masses now. We have the masses of carbon and hydrogen then that would have been in compound A. That's really what we just found, okay? So let's see what else we're being asked to do here. So next, let's clear this and see what's next. Right, so next we're being asked to use the answers obtained in A part one and A part two to calculate now the empirical formula of A, okay? So let's write down what we just got from A part one and A part two here. So from A part one, let's write that here, that from A part one, what we got was that we have zero, 0.96 grams of carbon and from A part two, we got that we have 0 0.18 grams of hydrogen. And so remember now when we're finding empirical formula, what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert the mass of the elements that we have, we're gonna convert those to moles. That's our first step. So our first step is to convert to moles, right? So we're gonna convert those numbers that we have to moles, mass to moles. And in order to do that, we're gonna divide by their relative, their respective molecular masses, okay? or their molar masses or atomic masses in this case, since we're looking at an atomic number of, of atomic carbon and atomic hydrogen. So we're gonna divide this mass for carbon by 12 gram per mole, which is the molar mass of a carbon atom. And we're gonna divide the hydrogen by its molar mass, which is one gram per mole. And when we do that, right, we end up getting Moles of carbon, the grams are going to cancel here, and we're going to end up getting 0 0.08 moles of carbon, right? And then over here, we're going to get grams cancel, moles come up top, and we're left with 0 0.18 moles of H. Okay. So that's what we have here, and this is for carbon. So our next step then, because we're finding empirical formula, is to divide, right, by the lowest. Divide by lowest number of moles, right? And when we do that, when we look at these two numbers, we see that the 0 0.08 is the lowest. So if we were to divide the 0 0.08, that we got by 0 0.08, right? We're gonna get what, one. And if we divide this 0 0.18 by 0 
0.08, we're going to get 2.25. Okay? Remember, what we're seeking, you know, is the simplest whole number ratio of carbon to hydrogen because that's what the empirical formula is. And so what we've gotten just now is that we have one, which is a whole number, but we have some we have some decimals here. And so what we have to do is we have to make this a whole number. And anything that we do to make this a whole number, we have to do the same thing to this one. So we're going to multiply. It turns out that we can just multiply that number by four. And we will end up getting a value of nine. And so because we multiplied this by four to make it a whole number, we have to multiply this one by four as well. And that will give us four. Okay. So in the end, what do we have for empirical formula? What it's what we just found is that we have four carbons and nine hydrogens. So our empirical formula then, which is our simplest whole number ratio, is C4H9. Okay. So that is our empirical formula of A. So we are done with part B. So moving right along to part C now, part C says that the molar mass of the compound A is 114 grams per mole. Using this information, now they want us to calculate its molecular formula. Remember now, the molecular formula is like the actual number of atoms that make up compound A. What we just found was the simplest whole number ratio in part B, which is the empirical formula. Now we want to know the actual number of atoms that are you know, present in compound A. And so we know, based on our previous lessons, that we can relate our empirical formula to our molecular formula using this equation here. It says empirical formula times a factor N is equal to the molecular formula, right? How do we find n? We have to find n first. We already have our empirical formula. We have that, but we don't know this, and we have to find n as well. So n is just going to be equal to our molecular formula mass or our molar mass divided by our empirical formula mass. So because we already have our empirical formula from here, we can find our empirical formula mass. And they gave us the molecular formula mass to be 114 gram per mole. So we can just go ahead and put the 114 on top. And we're going to be dividing that by empirical formula mass, which is 4 times 12, right? 4 times 12 plus 9 times 1. Right, there are nine hydrogen atoms, each having a mass of one. There are four carbon atoms, each having a mass of 12. And so, when we put that all together, we're going to end up with 114 being divided by what is this 48 plus nine, right? Which is 57. And so, in the end, it turns out that that factor n is actually two, right. So now we're ready to plug in here. We had our empirical formula from part B to be C4H9. We now know N to be 2, so we can multiply that by 2. And when we do that, what do we end up with? We end up with C8H18. Okay, so we do 2 times 4, 8, and 2 times 9, 18. And so this is now our molecular formula. Okay, so that's what was expected for us for this question. And with that, we are done, ready to move on to another question.